Zvn. Will you join the dark side for the all new BMW XM? Zvn. <laughs> It's already clear right now that this vehicle here will split opinions. The BMW XM is a dedicated BMW M model, the first one since the legendary BMW M1. And here they decided to go with an SUV, a performance SUV, because they thought, well, there's the Lamborghini Urus, for example, or the Aston Martin DBX, and we want some share of that market, actually. This car is for people who want to attract attention and maybe don't want to be liked by everyone indeed. And you can see it here with this huge double kidney illuminated as well. And these golden accentuations here are standard actually. You can depict them and go for a black frame, but they are actually standard because BMW wants this car to look unique and special. Cape York Green is this unique color as well. And well, you see, I always have this hobby that I try to uh, wear my clothes fitting to the vehicle color. And I really had a struggle today. I hope it is like at least somehow fitting. 21 to 23 inch. And these one I need the biggest 23 inch. Once again, with the golden accentuations. Most screaming out model, but you can also go for... Can you hear, say, for more subtle ones? You know what I mean. The same accounts for the golden strip here. This is once again standard, but you can also have it blacked out for a more sinister and less golden look, so to speak. The overall length is 5 meters 11 or 201 inches. The wheelbase is the very same of the BMW X7, and they do also have a base platform share, but they have a lot of differences as well. And you can see that the body form is not the same. So it's also a little bit shorter than, than the X7, and here it's more like a so to speak, an X7 Coupé, but once again, the dedicated M model, here also with even more contrasting accentuations. You might ask yourself, why would they not go for a supercar for an own BMW M model? Well, the thing is that the time for supercars is rather over. Today's electric vehicles have great acceleration figures for maybe like an Think about the Kia EV6 has supercar figures, for example, and then this supercar segment is getting less attractive while the SUVs are still surging in sales. And so BMW decided to go for the BMW M model, the first dedicated one after the M1 with an SUV. It is in the way 2.8 tons. And the question is, can it still give you a lot of performance and driving fun? Well, they tried to achieve that by technology. For example, rear axle steering as standard, so at lower speeds, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction in the front wheels at higher speeds in the parallel direction. Has an adaptive suspension, no air suspension though. So you know that the BMW M philosophy is rather not going for air suspensions to give you more contact, more feeling to the road. And also an anti-roll stabilization. Everything yeah, is basically standard with this vehicle. You only pick the colors and some options on the interior, but that's it. And yeah, I guess the price will also be accordingly. Have you already decided for love or hate? Have you decided for the dark side? Well, it might continue right here. Look at that, the horizontal integration of these lamps. And then it's really a very bold statement also in the rear end. Come closer here. These are laser engraved BMW logos, also a past citation of the BMW M1 looking really retro racing alike definitely. Well talking about racing, the top speed here of this vehicle is 250 kilometers an hour, optional with the driver's package 270 kilometers an hour, that's then 168 miles per hour. I don't want to meet that at that speed <laughs> on, the, on the German Autobahn, I'd rather do it myself than later on in a driving test. Here in the lower part Look at that, once again, the golden accentuations, and what? Look at these exhaust. These are therefore not fake. Real exhaust tips, of course, supposed to be for BMW M vehicle, and interesting that they're not next to each other, but in this vertical layout, really massive from the design. Do you like that? I mean, just look at that, these sculptural lines here, so, I mean, what I like about this vehicle is that they want to be unique. The rest of the factors, I will tell you more about that later when I think about it. Let's first concentrate on the facts. 
Let me open the hood and let's take a look. Of course, you know that always he's pulling it two times here with BMW. And what we have here is a 4.4 liter V8. Here we go. With either 650 horsepower or with the later label red, 750 horsepower. This version here goes 4.3 seconds to one kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. The later available version will be even quicker. And it's not only the V8, it is a plug-in hybrid. So they went for this plug-in hybrid because I say our true BMW M model will be electrified. So we can also expect that the future BMW M5 will get the very same powertrain here. 26 kilowatt hour is the battery capacity supposed to give you a maximum range of 80 kilometers or 50 miles up to a speed pure electric driving 140 kilometers an hour or 90 miles an hour. Of course in most cases both powertrains will be used especially when you hit the, the accelerator pedal so that's the way they can get the mo most power out of this vehicle. How does it work with the all-wheel drive? It will still have a rear wheel bias for this all-wheel drive because the electric motor is integrated in the whole transmission so there's no separate electric motor on the rear axle or something. No, that's not the system you're, they're using, they're integrating it. So basically everything is working together unless, unless you go for the EV only mode. That might be a thing for emission zones in cities or something or that you're a little bit more quiet when you're starting up the vehicle in the morning. This is the vehicle key with the M colors. Yeah, that's it. Cape York green vehicle color here. Would you pick this car? Tell me in the comments. We'll be looking forward to that. Um, yeah, sorry. Now I close the vehicle. Yes, it's always because when you put your finger right here, then you close it. When you put your hand on the inside here, then you open it. And door closing sound. That sounds cool. And then inside of the doors, we see things we haven't seen before, especially this color combination. In this case, also fitting to the exterior color. And also the rest of the interior has specific M gauges here, for example, the M1 and M2 button. We know that from other existing M vehicles, there you can have your individualized driving modes. For example, you say like, hey, M1 is maybe like a mid-sporty driving mode for me and M2 will be like sporty all the way. I would have put everything from the assistance system and helping. Uh, ESC aids everything off, then you can do that here individually. Also contrast stitching, still real buttons on the steering wheel. The seats are in that sporty M style as well with a lot of shoulder support, for example here. And also have these nice illuminated logos right here. So that's also a very cool idea. Um, the car does give you also a very distinct interior smell. This would be a turn off for, especially for Chinese customers who expect that the car doesn't smell at all from the interior. Well, and one of the reasons is that they still use real animal skin in this car and uh, in this car, and there might be like five, six, seven, maybe eight cows in here. And you might think of what is the reason behind that? Because it's 2022 and BMW says, we want to be a very sustainable brand and we want to go for more electrification, also for more sustainability. But here there's no other alternative to that. And that's, of course, from a customer's perspective, not acceptable. The seating comfort, however, is actually pretty good. So you have this combination in here of, um, you know, like SUV high seating position. At the same time, you have a lot of support so that you're when you're driving a little bit fast, which you will do in this vehicle, being kept tight. Steering wheel can be adjusted electronically like this. So how does it feel also when you compare like an X5, X7 or something? You do feel that they're sharing the same base platform, but you sit lower. It definitely feels sportier. You feel more integrated in the vehicle. You don't have this super command driving position you would have in the X5 or in the X7. Um, it's really, yeah, it is from the exterior still an SUV, but from the inside, when you feel how you sit here, you already think, yeah, this is definitely going in the sports car direction. BMW OS 8, 12.3, 14.9 screen, so two screens, but they're integrated in this one dash. And you already see here, you have special M gauges here also inside the menu. 
and also throughout the rest of the interior here very cool from the ambient lighting here very reduced design then carbon fiber here that's actually quite cool because you don't have so much black piano lacquer then and then we also know this here where you can adjust the uh, the shifting for example that you have a more crisp and faster shifting um, so this is special to the M cars here that you also have a real shifting knob of course still and here is then the set for the M modes for example where you can switch between normal road driving or sporter driving and also the setup button where you can then individualize your driving modes oh and then of course here this special exhaust button where you can spice it up even more digital instruments they have this split view also special m gauges left side you'll see the speed on the right side you will see the rpm and here then in the infotainment you can see when you are in this m setup then you can fine tune your chassis steering and so on and this you can also set to the uh, m1 or m2 button for example so here there we go m1 or m2 configuration and then you can really say like yeah this is my mode i want to have this in spot plus maybe steering a little bit lighter or stiffer and so on so highly customizable this is what they want to do here with their M vehicles and this lower part here will then be the ac unit so no real dials for that we already know it from the os8 at least it stays always in this position then so you can get along with that more or less and what they also do is get customer feedback and feedback from our channel and we said hey why don't you reintegrate the ac on or off function that you can have this you know like dehumid de making it less humid in the interior um, so you can turn it on or off so that's actually also possible other than that the whole menu looks like this also with a special gauge here the visualization also with the fitting color for example and then you have this gauged view here with all the apps and your auto Apple CarPlay wireless connection and wireless only indeed Sound system, by the way, either 16 speakers Harman and Cardon or here Bowers and Wilkins 20 speakers. So not only here, but you have another one here down there, for example, and both will actually do fine. And look at that integration here of the inside roof here, microfiber in this 3D landscape sculptural style, and I can also change the color. It is on the cost of not having a panoramic roof. So you cannot open it, you cannot see through. It looks like you could also remove it as a shade, but no, it's not. It's fixed, but then you have this special effect. It is something special and it is something new and unique. That's what I love about it. However, on the cost of not being able to go for a panoramic roof, hmm, not so sure about that. What is your take on this? If mom and dad are going racing, what about the kids here in the rear? Well. Even for really tall kids, no problem. <laughs> you know, I'm 189 or six foot two, and this still leaves some headroom, although we have like a little coupe alike style here, no problem indeed. And a lot of legroom here, as it's the X7 um, wheelbase, although the seats are very thick here, of course. And it is very comfortable here in the rear, actually. Um, maybe even more comfortable in the front. I could very well imagine being chauffeured in here. So the seating ergonomics here is actually luxury sedan like. So yeah, that's indeed very comfortable. That's on the plus note. And here, this part here, adaptive cup holders, you can fold it down and you can also use this one here as a ski hatch, for example. Other than that, you're of course not as flexible as with the BMW X7 here in the rear. That's not the intention. And with 530 liters of luggage capacity, you lose 220 liters in comparison to an X7. You can also get a bag here with a charging cable, for example, for the plug-in hybrid. You can see here you lose especially a lot of height, indeed, for this big plug-in hybrid battery. This is here just a cover you could remove. I already folded one half of the seats. It's at one third, two thirds bit. So you still have a well usable trunk, but there is of course losses here because they need to store the battery somewhere. I can at least stand underneath here somewhat. Well, a super interesting vehicle for sure. I would like to know from you, are you on the love or the hate side? Have you joined the dark side already with this vehicle? There are ups and downs with that one, definitely. 
So what I really like is that they are somewhat daring and say like, hey, we want to create something unique. You know, in a car world where a lot of models always look the same and through all the segments they start looking the very same, I think it's cool that there is some differentiation and also some fresh ideas. Hey, not everyone is loving golden wheels, but I mean, offering golden wheels for a special vehicle that is at its sense right now about 180,000 euros or dollars. Why not? However, the concept then with going so high in the weight with a plug-in hybrid drivetrain, 2.8 tons, you move a lot of weight on the road and you're not deciding yet saying like, hey, we got an all electric SUV that is, you know, our sports thing. You know, I'm not so sure about that. The plug-in hybrid is still a compromise. And of course, also that on the interior, you still only get animal skin, whereas in other segments, even for the BMW 7 Series or the i7, the electric version, they offer great alternatives now. They have that, but did not put that in this vehicle. So overall, I think, hmm, I'm a fan of the uniqueness, but I'm not a fan of the whole concept and that they weren't consistent with what they do instead. This seems to be like it is set off from the rest of the corporation, which is in a way also intended. But is it the right decision? I want to know that from you. Join us in the comments. And of course, well, I'm more a fan of the BMW X7 facelift. This one can also be bought with strong engines, definitely. That's pretty cool. And of course, also tune in to the BMW i7 or the new 7 series.